Hi, thank you for clicking on this video. Let's get this masterclass series underway. But first things first, woohoo, we get new orchids. So I will be addressing what information you can glean from your new orchids as you unwrap them. As most of us are eager to get into the pots, clean the root systems and get our orchids into our media of choice and preference, I hope that this video will give you some things to think about if you are an orchid grower that does all that cleanup straight away. Getting new orchids is such a blast, but doing the labor of love to settle them into their new homes and media based on your environment, then seeing that they are stalling, setback, or worst case scenario declining, that is when the doubts come in as to what went wrong. This video will hopefully clear those doubts up and avoid any possible future repeat mistakes. In addition to that, this video will address the angle of organic media only. So. I hope that you are comfortable, ready to share this video with everyone that you know grows orchids and struggles with the repot aftermath. Let the masterclass begin. First of all, let's talk about what our new orchids come in when we receive them, no matter the way we receive them, with the exception of bare root imports, which I will address at the end of this video. I will not be touching on the subject of fertilizing or supplementation in this video. I will separate that out. We are going to focus mainly on what we need to observe when we unwrap our new orchids for the first time or bring them home after having bought them locally. If we know nothing about the orchid, and that is what I'm going to take as a baseline for this masterclass, if we know nothing about the orchid, the media it is in, when we receive it, can tell us a lot about what the orchid requires when it comes to how much water does the orchid like. So, we have seen this a lot in many unboxing videos or even when we ourselves receive orchids in the mail that not all of them come in the same media. Now, what can we learn from the different content in the pots of the new orchids that can help us at first glance to make the right call on the choice of media moving forward when it comes time to repot? In order to break the simple down, you always need to keep in mind where your new orchids came from. The reason being, the seller may have completely different growing conditions than you do, and for that reason, the media may be perfect for the environment in which your orchids were previously growing in up until now. A nursery or greenhouse has the ability to have higher humidity, stay warmer for longer and provide consistent light for the orchids while they are at that location. And I'm going to stick with these two examples because most of our orchids come from large nurseries or smaller businesses which have greenhouses on a smaller scale. However, no matter the size of the greenhouse, the climate within the structures are maintained to suit the orchids' needs on a consistent basis. Keeping this in mind will help you understand and differentiate what your new orchids currently have in their pots and then take note of your growth space, be it indoors or outdoors. Know your humidity levels, how much rain your orchids are exposed to, if at all, what your watering habits are if you grow indoors, and your ability or lack thereof to provide the consistent amount of light for your orchids. If we assume your orchids came from perfect conditions, we have to assume that you have perfect conditions for what you already have in your collection. But your perfect conditions may differ completely to the conditions that the seller had. All this is important as we take note of the next thing. What media do the orchids have in their pots? We are at this stage not even looking to see if the media is good or bad. So let's not jump ahead. We are merely assessing the media the orchids came in. The media is the clue to what to take into consideration when it comes time to repot and not the genus. With that in mind, let's continue. If you have Oncidiums, they may come potted up in sphagnum moss only, or they may be in a mix of seedling bark. Some orchids may arrive in the coca choir that has become very popular because it's more environmentally friendly than sphagnum moss and bark. If your new orchid came in coca choir, the matching media would be sphagnum moss. Then you also just receive a cattleya, which could be in a mix of moss, tree fern shards, medium to chunky bark. There is a slipper orchid in rock wool or whatever. The point is, every orchid seems to come in completely different media from the oncidium you just unwrapped. 
Your next example could be a vendacious orchid that is in a pot with just chunky bark. What does all this mean and how can you make the right decision when it comes time to repot? You're in the right place, I'm about to tell you. The next step about what your orchid is potted up in is to remember the velamen of the existing roots. And this is the key for a successful repot and it applies to anybody who just cannot help themselves, cannot wait to repot and get their new orchids in fresh media, no matter if they are in active growth or not. If that is you and you feel spoken to, then you have to really match the conditions of the new media to that of what the original media was in the pot your orchids came in. And you have to probably change your watering habits for the duration while you wait for your orchid to grow new roots to accommodate the fresh media that you had to match as opposed to what you would have preferred to use. So if you cannot help yourself and you have to clean the root system before any new roots grow, some examples would be plain sphagnum moss that is pretty straightforward. You would opt for the same, just plain sphagnum moss. But you have been told or shown time and time again how much moss has been packed into a single pot and that it is excessive. The roots can't breathe, etc, etc. Well, if the roots in the pot are viable, it will tell you that you have to replicate what those roots are used to with the fresh sphagnum moss for your repot. You have to ensure that all the roots are nicely packed in with new sphagnum moss, touching as many of them as possible. And if you are uncomfortable with how tightly packed your orchid was in the previous pot, then jump over that hurdle because if the roots suddenly have more air around them because you mean well, they're not going to cope and any viable roots you had will die. You have to pack the fresh sphagnum moss just like how the orchid came out of the pot prior to you removing the old sphagnum moss. Because a previously tightly packed root system will not be able to cope with air around the velamen because the velamen did not grow with air around it. So it's not going to function. It will dehydrate and the viable roots will die. I know that it is weird to think that sphagnum moss loosely placed in the pot around the roots, even when kept consistently damp, will cause the layman to die. But that is the case because there is more air around the root and it was not used to it. So if you cannot wait for new roots and you feel you have to repot, then match the fresh media to what the orchid had previously and replicate the climate of the previous pot in the new pot even if it means that you are packing in the roots firmly with sphagnum moss, contrary to everything you have seen or been told. And don't forget that you may also have to jump over your shadow to water more often than you normally would with an orchid with a similar root system already established in your collection because new sphagnum moss dries out quickly. So let's look at the example of seedling bark. This oncidium has been in this pot since it arrived in my collection. Two new growths started and usually I would repot straight away because new growth means that new roots are on the way at some point. But as with any new orchid, at what point would that be? Some orchid grow roots after the new growth has finished blooming and that does not apply exclusively to oncidiums. Roots do not have a general rule of when they grow. The timing of root growth differs from genus to genus and orchid to orchid within the genus itself. So this orchid being new, I opted to wait. Even though I had received this orchid at the best time of year for a repot, it was warm, adequate light, etc. However, what if the acclimating process took longer? What if the transport stress did not appeal to this orchid at all, even though others in the box seem to cope really well? Then I will be introducing another level of stress, which is totally unnecessary and, well, there isn't a lot of orchid to work with should something go wrong. If this one were to have issues with more stressors, I would risk it completely. That is why it is still in the same pot and I cultivated it according to the media it came in. Now, you may be looking at the pot and saying, I wouldn't repot it either because the media looks great. Not all the orchids we get shipped from sellers come with good media that we can feel comfortable leaving the orchid in, but I'll get to that. Let me just say that even if the media of this pot was broken down and had algae in it, etc, etc, I still would not have repotted it because once again, whatever is in the pot seems to be holding on just fine because none of the pseudobulbs were shriveling and the regular flushing helps to flush out any excess decay 
if there were to be any. So, to report this one prematurely, if that is what I felt I had to do, I would have to replicate the size of the bark, possibly even the size of the pot, and the only thing required here would be to shake out any loose bark and leave old bark that is attached to the fine roots on. Remember, I'm protecting the velamen. It is not necessary to remove every single bit of old media on roots when it comes to repotting. The velamen is more important than our need for a clean root system. And in this case, I would not pack the fresh seedling bark into the new pot because clearly it wasn't packed tight previously. But once again, keep in mind that you will have to water more frequently because we are dealing with fresh seedling bark. And although it is reputed to hold on to moisture for longer, it will not do so for the first month or thereabouts. It is a drier setup from jump when using new bark, even if it is seedling bark. In order to accommodate the existing velamen that was used to older seedling bark, frequent watering is important so that there is enough moisture around the roots as it had with the older seedling bark, which retains water much more readily than any new seedling bark would. I also want to touch on an example that I have as a vendacious orchid that is in a pot with just chunky bark. This could be your new cattleya as well as any other orchid. Some slipper orchids have the appearance to be potted up in just chunky bark, but underneath the surface there may be sphagnum moss or rock wool. So a little rummaging around the surface of the media with your finger is a good idea to see if your initial assessment was correct. But let's go back to chunky bark only. This one is easy if you cannot wait for new roots and you just want to get ahead and repot. Ideally, you would wait. But because the old bark will not have degraded, you can leave any of it on if a root became too much of a bark hugger. And of course, you would repeat what you see with a fresh media and use chunky bark again. However, as with the seedling bark, the chunky bark will also repel water for the foreseeable future and do that even longer than seedling bark. So what you need to keep in mind is to pour water through the pot at least three times per week for the first six weeks or until you see the bark holding onto water a little longer, which will come as traces of condensation. As long as the pot shows condensation, you won't need to pour more water through it. However, do not let that pot go dry for too long because the previous old bark held onto water and the velamen will want the same conditions to draw on with the fresh bark. Now imagine you get yourself a new orchid that is wrapped in coconut shell slabs. And I call them that because it's not cocoa husk chips. I'm talking the long single pieces of coconut shell which have been wrapped around the orchid while it was a seedling and has been in that net pot for years and it shows when you get it. If your orchid is not growing new roots, please, no matter how you feel about that stuff, do not remove it or try to gently remove it as much as you can and then pot the orchid up with some left on, etc, etc. This is such an exception to what I mentioned previously that you can match media and adapt watering requirements in the event you cannot wait for new roots. Remember what I said right at the beginning. But this coconut shell cage, for lack of a better term, is fantastic for growing your new orchid where it originally came from. And clearly it shows because you should have yourself a big orchid with many growths and a whole network of roots growing everywhere. For your environment, this just may not be the right setup and you want to get it off the orchid and give the orchid a fresh start. In this instance, again, I highly recommend you do not repot without new roots already starting because no matter how gentle you are, how careful you know you are going to be, the existing root system will be shredded and destroyed. If you are lucky, you may come out with 20% of the old root system still looking intact, but that velamen is also microscopically shredded and damaged in parts. These coconut shells are amazing for orchid roots to grow into. They offer little resistance when the roots grow down vertically and they hold a nice chunk of moisture long enough before the next rain falls. That is the climate where they were originally cultivated before being sold to the seller you got the orchid from. And you can see that the orchid has been in the shell for many, many years and still there is no breakdown of the material. So I highly recommend that. If you receive an orchid in this kind of setup, use the fact that the coconut shells are not anywhere near to degrading to your advantage and cultivate your orchid with this media until such a time that new roots grow and then remove it as best as possible 
and as gently as possible. You will still break roots in the process, but you have backup coming, and that is your orchid's saving grace. The care while you wait with these coconut shells around the root system of your new orchid is as follows, because I know it can be daunting. Submerge the pot or basket to just below the base of the orchid and let her soak for at least four hours, like you might do with a Phalaenopsis orchid, and then put her back on the shelf and leave her to get to almost dry, just like with a Phalaenopsis. Depending on where you are growing an orchid that you just received in this setup, if outdoors with plenty of airflow, soaking once a week will be enough for a medium-sized orchid, possibly two times a week for a large-sized orchid. Of course, you will know that the outside is going to dry out faster than the inside, but if the outside of the coconut shell still has the hardened out shell facing outwards, it will hold moisture in the basket longer than you think. Know that where your orchid came from, it got rained on and the atmosphere provided a lot of humidity as well. So know that its place of origin, there was plenty of water going into that media and including overhead misting while it was at the nursery. It is not going to have any adverse effects if you get the soaking timing wrong. The fact that these coconut shells do so well in those climates and then in a nursery prior to the orchid being sold off is because of runoff. With rain and misting, there's more runoff. Not much gets absorbed into the center of the material. However, in cultivation, in a climate where we have to provide water and nature isn't doing it for us and we don't have overhead misting systems because we are not in a greenhouse, the soaking will allow for the material to absorb water all the way into the center. And that is why I suggest only soaking once a week for a medium-sized orchid and two times a week for a large one. Daily soaks are not the same as daily rain showers or daily stints of overhead misting. Daily soaks would be far too much. Keep that in mind because rain will run off as misting will run off as well. However, no matter the examples I've just covered, with any media, if you cannot wait for new roots to grow, if there's any media on the roots that is difficult to remove, do not be insistent to remove it. The health of the root system of your orchid is more important than the need to get everything off. And to give you peace of mind as to why I say that without hesitation that the old media is going to break down faster because you left some of it on, let me point this out. Organic media will break down anyway, and usually a repot cycle is as follows. We will be refreshing the media within one year when it comes to sphagnum moss, within two years for seedling bark or similar, or in the case of chunky bark, three years. So a little bit of old media on an existing root system will do the climate of the pot absolutely no harm. Trying to remove stubborn media from the root will bruise, rip or remove the layman, and that will risk the loss of that root much quicker than any kind of older media you've left on it. But I'm hearing voices in my head. <laughs> You may already be thinking along the lines of, but my new orchid arrived with a pot full of dead roots, I have to repot. Do you though? So let's touch on that possibility. You have received an orchid and all the roots in the pot are dead. If you receive orchids with a pot full of dead roots, I recommend not to repot. It makes no difference to any dead root system if the media is suddenly fresh. The root system won't come back to life and you are wasting good media Meanwhile, also shocking the orchid. An orchid with dead roots in a pot fares better than an orchid that has had all the dead roots chopped off and now sits on fresh media and has to grow new roots. And again, it can take a while before they actually do grow, depending on the orchid, etc. For some reason, taking off old roots on an orchid and having it secured in a pot with fresh media while waiting for new roots to grow brings about a rapid decline of the orchid compared to if the orchid were just left in the old pot with old media and dead roots. I have not figured out why that is the case, but I have drawn a few conclusions because I have experienced it a lot and not because of any setup change. I am going back decades when I noticed it in my second collection and I have seen it happen with many orchids online. Dead roots, chop, clean, fresh media, all great, the orchid is set and now we wait. And suddenly, the previously okay looking orchid starts to decline and no energy is left for root growth. 
If that has happened to you in the past, let me know in the comments. Not for any other reason, but for me to know if you have noticed the same dynamic when you were faced with a pot full of dead roots and decided to do the right thing by the orchid and suddenly, within a month, she was gone. Based on what I have experienced personally and observed online for what it's worth, I would leave the orchid in the media and wait for new roots before repotting and then having the flexibility to be more liberal with the choice of media according to my preferences and environment. And now I have a little niggle in my brain. I can hear you say, well, those are potted orchids. I got mounted orchids also in my box of new orchids. What can I take away from a mounted orchid, etc.? That is a separate video in the Masterclass series. And once that video airs, I will link it in this description as well if you would like to go check it out. But finally, let me get to the example of getting bare root orchids from overseas imports. In order to not make this video any longer, I'm going to refer you to a video linked in the description where I go into detail on how to assess what needs to be done with bare root orchids depending on the condition they are in when you receive them. Some may arrive in great shape and are ready to be potted up because new roots are already growing and there are root tips and some will require a little bit more work. Please do not be put off that the video shows examples of Rapiculus lalias. It just so happens that I had those on hand to talk about what I do with bare root imports for the content of that video. Everything I show in that video and explain can be applied to any bare root orchid you receive and I hope that it will help in the event that you find yourself with new beauties that came with nothing around their tootsies. But in summary, ideally you want to wait for new roots to grow and then you can be more flexible with your media choice. Your preferred media and ratio or complete media change including not having to change your watering schedule too much to accommodate the new orchids. So you see why it is actually more feasible to wait for new roots to grow before doing everything I mentioned in the examples? Pointing out all the things that you would need to change that change your routine to keep an older viable root system happy and feeling out of your comfort zone when you go against the grain of what you would prefer to do when it comes to potting up new orchids to incorporate them into your collection. I am not saying that you have to wait. This video is to point out why it is best to wait. And if you cannot do so, what you need to keep in mind throughout the process of ensuring that an older root system won't die on you before the orchid grows a new root system. And if all what I talked about here today still has you itching to get into the pots of your new orchids and not wait for new roots, follow these guidelines. Anything in Sphagnum Moss and Coca Choir will confirm the orchid loves water. Any orchid in seedling or medium-sized bark mixed with sphagnum moss will tell you the orchid loves access to water and the media should never dry out completely between watering. Chunky bark confirms that the orchid likes a wet dry cycle and the media can go dry before the next watering. These are the recommendations and culture tips that you can follow and apply to your new orchids just by taking them out of the box and seeing what media they came in. Even if you know nothing about the orchid, I really hope this video was helpful and I hope that any new orchids you receive or already have when you apply these tips that they will just perform as if nothing has happened. However, let me just add this one little thought, please. It is so much more relaxing with the backup new root system already underway. Any small mistake will not be a detriment to the health and further development of the orchid because new roots are growing anyway. It's going to be okay. The risk of stalling new orchids or setting them back will be reduced as will the possible decline of what was a great orchid that arrived with a dead root system. So in the next video within the Masterclass series, I will talk about the inorganic media that matches organic media in the event that you are switching the setup and the makeup of your media entirely. When that video airs, I will also link it in the description, so keep an eye out for that. I appreciate you so much for watching, for sharing and liking the video. Consider subscribing today if you haven't already done so, because the Masterclass series is going to be quite substantial, and if this video met your expectations, you don't want to miss the next ones. Thank you for your time, thank you for your support. I wish you a fabulous day on one condition though. Please stay safe. Take care. Bye.